Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're going to be moving on from our power-up system and adding some polish to the game. So to begin with, in this tutorial, we'll be adding some screen shake. And we'll make this happen when the bullets are colliding with objects like the asteroids and the enemy ships. And in the next one, we'll be adding some particle effects like ship exhaust and debris from the explosions. So let's jump in. Now, this will actually be fairly easy because we have done a lot of the hard work setting up the camera in previous tutorials. So let's head over to the camera and remind ourselves of what we've done. So basically, this part was where we were setting the camera's position. So we were setting the camera basically to follow the player. And to get the camera to shake, all we really need to do is add some random variability to the X and Y position. So right here, after it's done this, what we can do is add kind of a random number to make it shake back and forward. So what I'll do is I'm going to create a new variable and this is the one we're going to refer to when we want to make something shake. Actually, we can just add it here. So we can just add this right here. I'm gonna call this camera shake. We will set it to zero by default and when it's zero, it's gonna have no effect on the camera. Now over here, what we'll do is add camera shake to the X and Y position. But actually we're not just going to add that value straight to it. We're going to add a random range from the positive value of camera shake to the negative value. And what that will kind of look like is if we get a random range of the positive camera shake, say it's at five at the moment to negative five, we could pick any number between negative five and five. So it might be one, it might be negative four, it might be 2.35. So it's gonna shake kind of between those values backwards and forwards. So that's gonna create the erratic camera behavior. So exactly as I said, the minimum is going to be the negative value of whatever camera shake is. And then the maximum will be camera shake. So this will return, like I said, a random number from negative camera shake to camera shake. Now we need to save this in a variable. So I'll call this one X shake. And then I'll do the same for Y. So I'm gonna do same thing, return Y shake. And now we're going to add these to the camera X and camera Y. So you can see if camera shake is zero, these will turn a number between negative zero and zero, which will be zero. So it's not going to affect it at all. But if it's a negative number or a positive number, then it will add some kind of shake. So when, for example, we set camera shake equal to four or something, when the asteroids get destroyed, we want it to start shaking, but then we want the shake to get kind of less and less. We don't want it to keep shaking forever. So I also need to reduce camera shake by some kind of value. So I might just put minus 0.2 relative to whatever it's currently equal to. And that's gonna make it kind of steadily decrease and lessen. Now, the only thing we have to be careful of is that like I said, we don't want this to kind of decrease past zero and then go into the negatives. Because even if it's a negative number, it's still going to return some kind of value. So for example, if we have negative 0.1, what we'll get is negative negative 0.1 to negative 0.1. So we'll still get some kind of random range between its positive and negative value. So the danger of this is we only want to do it. We have to put it in an if check. If camera shake is currently greater than zero. But that's not all because technically if we have set camera shake to say 3.1 and we're subtracting by 0.2, there's a danger that it will hit negative 0.1. So we need another little check here just to catch those cases where it's gone past zero. So if camera shake is less than zero, we're just going to make sure it hits zero. So we'll set camera shake to zero. And that's all we need to do. It should be all set up now. We just have to actually change camera shake in the objects where we want to start a camera shake response. So we're going to head over to the parent enemy and in the destroy event, we're gonna add that camera shake. 
So you could have it depend on the enemy type. So you could have it shake more if we're hitting a brute or something, but I might actually just keep it simple. I'm going to just set it to four for all of them. Now you might want to play around with these numbers just to get a feel for kind of how much the camera is going to shake. You might like more camera shake than that. And now we do just want to make sure that we are applying this to the camera because remember that variable is within the scope of the camera only. All right, so we can just copy this now and head over to the asteroid as well because I also want to do it there. And actually a lot of the Asteroids are such different sizes that I might want to make it depend on the size of the asteroid. But actually our switch statement for the asteroid is in this event right here. We kind of never moved it, even though a lot of this is specific to being destroyed. We only want to play the sound if we're destroyed, add to the score and create the new asteroids. The only thing we really want to leave is this, because this is what it does when it is taking damage. In the future, though, you might want to change this and add, for example, health to the rocks or something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this to the top. I'm going to copy all of these. I'm going to shift click down here. I'm going to cut them and I'll put them in the destroy event. All right, great. So now we can put in those changes to the shake. And here in our if checks for what kind of asteroid it is in the huge one, what I'll do, so outside here, not within the repeat loop, I don't want to do this twice, just here, we will set camera shake equal to, let's do four, because that's actually, that's going to be quite a lot. Remember to apply that to the camera. I'm going to copy that. I'll paste it here. So this was for the medium one. I'll make that two, so kind of like half. And we didn't have a case for the smallest one, so I'm going to make that now. Let's drag in an else. To there and then we can add in and paste for the last time the camera shake and i will make that one you could kind of modify this you could make it relative to what the camera shake currently is because for example if you just blew up a large asteroid and you've set the camera to four camera shake and then you go and destroy a little one that will kind of override that four value and make it one so what you might want to do as i said is tick these relatives which will kind of made it make it add to it incrementally but you might find that it shakes too much if you do that so another thing you could do is add an if check and only kind of add to it if camera shake is less than whatever you're about to add then you can kind of set it to that but then otherwise don't but i'll leave that up to you i'm going to keep it simple and just make it this it should work for the purposes of our game but that's definitely something you can play with all right, so we're done and we're ready for testing. Let's hit play. So here we go. Let's go and shoot something. Awesome. So our camera shake is working. As you can see, whenever we hit something and blow it up, it causes the camera to shake. So that is it for this tutorial. As you can see, it's quite easy to add the camera shake, given all the work that we'd already done to the camera. Next tutorial, we're going to move on and start playing around with particle effects. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.